Hi, Nathan. Congratulations on your win tonight. Oh, thank you. Of course. Now, we saw during CM Punk's match that he did motion that he wants a title <laughs> shot. Does that frighten you at all, knowing that you still have the biggest target on your back in AEW? Uh, frighten me? <laughs> no. no uh, excite me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, a good portion of our roster I, I grew up watching. Uh, he, of course, is one of them. See, the entrance tonight was uh, incredible. Uh, chills down my spine. So, uh, I completely welcome it, if that's what he said. Uh, we'll find out Wednesday. Right, so. Thank you. Yes, in the back. Oh, hey, my great match. Hi, thank, thank you. For us in the Australian Grassy Podcast. Insane show we had tonight. Shout out to Tony Khan. How do you, as the champion and the main eventer, stay focused when there's so many amazing things going on before your match? How do you just say, I'm going to not ignore everything that they did and do the best that I can to have the best match of the night? Uh, it's tough because tonight was a hell of a show. I mean, there was everything. You saw everything before I ever got out there, and I saw it too because I, I watched the entire show. Um, it's difficult, uh, and especially these days, having a child at home, I feel very scatterbrained all the time. So it's, and maybe that's a good thing today because I wasn't able to take everything in and, and let it uh, start to, to worry me, but I just get so damn excited to do, uh, to do this. So I, I think watching anyone else do it doesn't, doesn't bother me at all, you know. Next question, in the back, ESPN. Brian Rose, the ESPN West Palm. You and Adam Cole, long storytelling. You guys had a little bit of a break with him uh, working elsewhere. What was it like being in the ring with him again? Uh, <laughs> oddly familiar, knowing that I haven't seen him since, what, 2017, maybe, uh, in the ring. Uh, very familiar. Um, we have familiar uh, or similar movesets to a degree. Um, and it was, I don't know, man, it was kind of refreshing to, because, man, when he, he left Ring of Honor, he was the man, you know what I mean? Like, he was the man. Uh, and I was just a kid trying to figure it out. Um, and to get to be across the ring of him today and be able to hang uh, and then beat his ass uh, felt very good, very validating, you know. Uh, one of the few times recently I felt really good about myself, I guess. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, you just brought up Ring of Honor there. Uh, you obviously cut your teeth there, and now Tony owns it. Um, what would Isn't you that like? Wild? To <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to see Tony do with Ring of Honor? Uh, you know what? Um, I could give you a thousand different ideas, um, but the truth is, honestly, whatever the hell he wants, uh, because I think he has a very good track record with what he's done with AEW. Um, so going forward, uh, I trust this man uh, with Ring of Honor, uh, and I really do. I, I care a lot about Ring of Honor, and, and, I, and I trust Tony with it because I know that he does too. Um, he knows more about Ring of Honor than I do, I'm sure. You know, and I worked there for a very long time. Uh, so uh, you know, whatever whatever your intentions are, whatever your, your plans are, whatever you end up deciding to do, um, hey, and that's a lot more people who you know will have a job in wrestling, and that's one of the big things I was excited about with AEW because I knew, uh, you know, all my friends who, who you know, were, were just trying to scrape by would, would be able to make a living doing this. Uh, and that's really the dream. Uh, so to continue that, I mean, it's a blessing. So I, I'm happy no matter what. Yeah. Thanks. Right there, Lita, in front of you. Jose Montesino from Lucha Libre Online. First of all, congratulations on this match. Um, <laughs> you said that you beat one of the men's from Ring of, Ring of Honor. And now you have on the list, you beat Kenny Omega, you beat Alan Cole now. We know that you and CM Punk will be a great match, but outside from CM Punk, who do you have on mind on defending that championship? And how it feels to have all the pressure in the world? Because to be honest, right now, all of it is one of the hottest companies, or so how do you feel to have that, that pressure to be the guy, the face of it? Uh, honestly, it's tough. Uh, I'll be honest with you, because I, I, I watched today's show, I saw, I saw everything on the show, and it's, it's tough to know that you have to follow every single bit of that. Um, but I trust, you know, I, I trust myself, I trust our fans uh, to be there. And, and when the bell rang and people are <laughs> chanting, 
Let's go at them. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they meant me or him, but it's a good feeling either way uh, because they cared. Um, so that pressure is tough, uh, and I think it's made me, I don't know, maybe a, a, a better person in some ways, maybe a, a worse one. I don't know. Maybe I'll figure that out one day. Um, but I, I welcome it. I thrive in it. Yeah. Thanks. Scott? Uh, Scott Fishman, TV Insider. You mentioned, uh, you know, having a child at home. Um, how would you say that kind of has impacted the way you look at wrestling now? You know, you're, the way you're, you know, you wrestle a very physical style right now. You're on the road now, so now you have someone at home that you know you have to think about. So how does that kind of change things? It's tough. I miss it. <laughs> this is the longest look we've done in a while. Because um, you know, usually it's it's I'll, I'll leave home on, on Tuesday night and get home Thursday morning first thing, so it's not as bad. Uh, this has been a while. It's it's tough, truthfully. Um, someone asked me before if if maybe you know does it change my in ring style? Do I want to be a little safer? And honestly, I think the answer is no. It may be the opposite. I'm even more reckless uh, because I have this and I have to retain this. I have to keep this. This is what puts food on his table. Um, so I think it's just one more piece that adds to all that pressure, but again, I, I welcome that. Here we go. Hi, congratulations on your win tonight. I'm Samir uh, from you. Wrestling News Co. Could we see you possibly work with ROH in some way? Uh, sure, I'm <laughs> completely open to that. Uh, I have, you know, again, I have no idea what Ring of Honor will be going forward. So I have, uh, you know, no idea. I, I can't, it's kind of hard to, to, to say anything there. Um, uh, but I, I certainly wouldn't mind showing up again. Yeah. Here we go. Hi, Adam. Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture. So I want to ask you, because obviously we were there when you won the title and we got to talk to you, and you've had battles, you know, with Lance Archer, Brian Danielson, etc. now Adam Cole. So my question to you is, have you surprised yourself in terms of the champion that you have become? Uh, maybe so. Yeah, maybe a bit. I always, um, you know, I would even say... Not even my whole time in, in AEW, but my whole, not even my whole career, my whole damn life, I have just imagined what it would be like to climb that mountain and win the world championship. Uh, and I did it, and I never really thought about what would happen the next day. Um, and that's been tough, it's an adjustment, because I, now I'm not sure, beyond holding on to this, you know, what the monumental goal in my life is, um, other than holding on to this. Um, have I surprised myself? Sure, yeah. Uh, my body surprised myself as well. Uh, I'm very surprised. I can still use my arms. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's um, it's been good. It's been rewarding too to hear people still be there for it after such an emotional roller coaster ride that they've been on uh, to winning the championship to, to still be there with me, knowing you know I, I climbed the mountain. Uh, now they want to see me stay on top of it. That's rewarding. Great. John and then AJ. Hey man, John Alba Podcast. He, I think a lot of people resonated with your journey because you were very vulnerable and you were very transparent, the anxious millennial cowboy, all that stuff. And we see you now using your platform, uh, talking about LGBTQ plus and uh, promoting other things like that. How do you feel you're making usage of your platform as champion for advocating for other causes? Uh, I, I don't know. I hope I do a good job. I mean, uh, I, I want to stay champion forever, but more than anything, I just want to be a good person. You know, um, I anytime that, you know, I could put something out that someone could donate to or, or, or anything, you know, maybe just humor, you know, some people. I, I feel like I change my mind a lot when someone can make me laugh. If you can make me laugh, I'm more likely to listen to you, to believe you. Um, and if, you know, somebody thinks something's funny, that's great. Maybe, maybe I can change a mind or two. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Not to, not to think loftily of myself. I certainly, I certainly don't. I promise you. Great, AJ. Um, AJ from the AJ Awesome Show here. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> I recognize you. It's been a while. <laughs> Having being teamed on with Red Dragon and Dark Order coming out to save you several times before, how has your relationship with Dark Order changed for the better or the worse while you have been the champion? Um, it's tough. Uh, I don't know. I, I probably need to talk to them <laughs> to after tonight. 
Uh, I definitely do. Um, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to say anything uh, negative about those guys. I don't know, maybe it's not a good idea to say too many negative things about myself, but I certainly, uh, when we're done with this, I hope they're still here. I could find them. Alex, at least. I don't know, sorry, it's not a very straightforward answer. Um, I don't know that I have one. Okay, so two more questions, Sean, and then we'll end up with uh, UCF. <laughs> Sean Ross at Fightful. Uh, you had a win tonight. You had a pretty savage beating of Kane on Twitter last <laughs> week. <laughs> my, my question is, had you watched that video prior, or did you search that video? <laughs> I, you know, I think I searched it verbatim, and it was a real thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> YouTube has everything. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I I probably just typed in game chairs or something. You know, <laughs> first thing that showed up. Uh, some of those were very brutal. Jesus very Christ, I'm glad, I'm glad we don't do that too much anymore. Uh, yeah, thank God for that. Okay, last question, Spencer. Thank you. Hey man, Spencer Valdez, I'm sent today with UCF. Uh, the last time we saw UCF uh, see AEW was Dynamite in October. It's since been five months. It's a relatively short time frame, but knowing the way things move in professional wrestling, uh, where do you hope to be in your career by the time AEW makes its way back to UCF again? I hope there is it again. Uh, I hope there is too, and judging by tonight, there probably will be. I hope to still be holding this. Uh, I still, I hope to still be holding this and uh, feel a little better about some things here and there. Uh, but yeah, I hope to still be your AEW World Champion by the time we come back. Awesome. Do we have a Do we have a comeback? I haven't planned a date back yet, but I mean, hey, well, you know, I uh, definitely want to come back here. It's been great. It was great for TV and it was amazing for the pay per view tonight. Sold out crowd as yeah, well. Yeah, they were tremendous, tremendous crowd. The sold out uh, and capacity crowd and great support for Rampage also. So. Uh, I loved it here. Thanks. Thank you, Hangman. Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm literally going to go to the airport. <laughs>